everyone. Today I'm going to talk about The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. So this book is mainly about a young woman called Esther Greenwood. It is about how she struggles with depression, how she copes and survives it. Uh, so the society crawls and creeps on Esther, it suffocates her, it doesn't let her breathe. At the beginning of the novel, Esther Greenwood gets an internship at Ladies Day magazine in New York. And she describes the events which lead her to madness. So this Roman clip is mainly about how Esther Greenwood removes the bell jar on her head. Despite the description of Esther's suicide attempts, this book is really engrossing and absorbing. It talks about how many times societal ambitions come in the way of personal aspirations or how many times choosing one thing over the others means losing all the others. The author uh, compares goals of a person to fix of a fig tree and she uses a lot of imagery in this book which is very excellent which makes us feel what Esther feels or makes us see what Esther sees. If a person is suffering from mental illness I don't think that that person should read this book and there are different people in this book. There are different people with different characters, different ways etc. Like for example her former boyfriend Buddy Willard who seems to be the perfect picture of a socially acceptable man but she finds that he is a hypocrite. He uh, seems to be very well behaved, very good to her. He is going to become a doctor, he is going to achieve everything but on the inside he has something and on the outside he has something spurious. I think Esther feels like dying in this book because um, she wants everything, she wants all the figs and if she chooses her career over ha a happy married life then she wouldn't be successful in her personal life and if she chooses a happy married life then all those years of straight days hard work would be wasted. This dilemma pushes her into hysteria. There's a lot that is expected from women even these days so we should understand how much would have been expected in the 1950s. So I have recently read in an article that uh, even in a sophisticated country like US mothers are abated to take care of their children rather than fathers. So many mothers like that quit their jobs. So Sylvia Plath, born in 1932, was a very good student. She had an IQ around 160. Uh, she won a Pulitzer Prize for her poems posthumously. And uh, her writing style is so awe-striking that she uses simple sentences, she uses simple language in Bell Jar, but the comparison she makes are so related to the situation she describes. And we can consider Esther Greenwood to be Sylvia Plath because Sylvia Plath herself suffered from a severe depression. Um, so she tried to take her life many times but this book might as well be an attempt to survive because Esther recovers successfully. From Bell Jar, we can understand that uh, Sylvia Plath had a penchant for living her life according to her own will, her own plan. Like Joyce Carol Oates said, Sylvia Plath is really the spokeswoman of our most private, most helpless nightmares. Her poetry, her writing enchants us and will enchant us forever. Thank you. Lady Lazarus. I have done it again. One year in every ten I manage it, a sort of walking miracle. My skin bright as a Nazi lampshade, my right foot a paperweight, my face a featureless fine Jew linen. Peel off the napkin, oh my enemy. Do I terrify? Yes, yes, Herr Professor, it is I. Can you deny the nose, the eye pits, the full set of teeth? The sour breath will vanish in a day. Soon, soon the flesh the grave cave eight will be at home on me, and I a smiling woman. I'm only thirty, and like the cat, I have nine times to die. This is number three. What a trash to annihilate each decade. What a million filaments. The peanut crunching crowd shoves in to see them and wrap me hand and foot. The big strip tease. Gentlemen, ladies, these are my hands, my knees, 
I may be skin and bone, I may be Japanese. Nevertheless, I am the same identical woman. The first time it happened, I was 10. It was an accident. The second time I meant to last it out and not come back at all. I rocked shut to the seashell. They had to call and call and pick the worms off me like sticky pearls. Dying is an art, like everything else. I do it exceptionally well. I do it so it feels like hell. I do it so it feels real. I guess you could say I have a call. It's easy enough to do it in a cell. It's easy enough to do it and stay put. It's the theatrical comeback in broad day to the same place, the same face, the same brute, amused shout, a miracle that knocks me out. There is a charge for the eyeing of my scars. There is a charge for the hearing of my heart. It really goes. And there is a charge, a very large charge, for a word or a touch or a bit of blood or a piece of my hair or my clothes. So, so, Herr Doctor. So, Herr Enemy. I am your opus. I am your valuable. The pure gold baby that melts to a shriek. I turn and burn. Do not think I underestimate your great concern. Ash, ash, you poke and stir, flesh, bone. There is nothing there, a cake of soap, a wedding ring, a gold filling. Hear God, hear Lucifer, beware, beware. Out of the ash I rise with my red hair, and I eat men like air.